Let's look at uh, port scanning through the router. Now, this would be equivalent to an attacker um, sitting somewhere on the internet doing a port scan through a router or routers, probably most cases, routers to get to um, your network and to do a port scan on a particular computer on your network. Now let's spend a moment reviewing what a port scan really is. A port scan is when you send a packet to a particular IP number and a particular port number on that IP uh, in use on that IP number. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be in use actually. You send a a, uh, a packet to a port on a machine, and by looking at the response you get from that machine, you can make a determination of whether there is an application listening on that port or not. And typically, we do this using TCP ports, although it is possible to perform UDP ports that are a little bit harder to do. So what we're going to do here is a TCP port scan and uh, we'll be looking at the, at the packets because uh, I want you to know what's in the packets. Now keep in mind you don't have to sniff the packets. Uh, actually the tool that you're using to do the scan is doing that for you and deciphering the results and displaying them for you as either an open or a closed port. But I want you to see the packets, so therefore we're going to sniff the packets. So I've already connected to one of the computers in my lab that's connected to a router. This is 192.168.157.63. And I've um, started up both the Windows XP Professional Mark No Patches and also the Windows Server 2000 Enterprise. This mark follows six. Um, you'll notice it's currently locked. It's all right. It simply must be on. We don't have to be logged into it. Um, this is just like a server sitting on the uh, on the network somewhere. You don't have to be logged in for it to work, for it to do its job. So this is what I have open in um, VMware. Now, I've uh, been playing around with the router, so I've just re uh, reconfigured it. Um, and that's it's the same process we went through before. Uh, and for, um, unless I'm going to do a reconfiguration of it, there's really no need to... Uh, to do this except for the fact that in this lab if someone goes through and changes something uh, in the router configuration you might get unexpected results when you do um, your port scan so it's probably a good idea to go back and reconfigure it every time anyway it's good practice so here's what I'm going to do my server is up and running here's my XP my router is configured with the basic configuration that we, we did previously, which is really only setting up the interfaces uh, with IP numbers. Now, by default, a router will route. Uh, that's what they do. Um, so let's see what happens when we do a, a, a FTP port scan. And here's the, the target. 10.10.10.2, so it's the start and the stop uh, range here for the IP because we only want to do one machine. <clears throat> now we can do many ports here uh, to kind of simplify things. I've decided let's go from one to a hundred, and I've got the results here, but I'm going to click on start anyway and let it go through and do it again. And it's relatively quick on that because we're only scanning a hundred ports. Now, if we double click over here, we get um, a report on these are the ports that uh, SuperScan 
has reported as being open. Again, these are TCP ports. And furthermore, if we expand some of these, we get some interesting information. Port 21, which is the FTP uh, control port, uh, has reported back with a banner, and we'll look at that here in a moment, uh, saying this is the Microsoft FTP service. And uh, that's actually very informative if we are a an attacker. It's good to know what uh, what FTP, uh, particular FTP software is running on this or listening on this port. We've got a little more information on the simple mail transfer uh, port. We we're told here that it's running Microsoft ES. MTP mail service version, yada yada yada. Now again, from an attacker standpoint, this is interesting. Because if I know you're running this, I can go see if there are any known exploits or any vulnerabilities um, that could be exploited. So this is valuable information for an attacker, and this is why we did the port scan to find out things like this. 53 also is being reported as open. That's uh, DNS, although most DNS. Uh, uses UDP port 53. TCP port 53 is also associated with TCP for longer queries and zone transfers, etc. So if I see that TCP port 53 is open, I have a pretty good uh, idea that UDP port 53 is open. And this is actually the server's running DNS. <clears throat> and again, if I'm an attacker, I go looking for uh, vulnerabilities in DNS that I could possibly ex exploit and take control of your computer. Finally, we've got the World Wide Web Service. Again, we're given some, uh, we got some information back when we did our port scan. We'll look at these. Um, so this is all a really very interesting information that we got. Now remember, the virtual XP, it's um, IP number is 172.61.2. We're scanning 10.10.10.2. So these computers are on totally different networks. And this is going through the router and coming back through the router. So let's start at Wireshark and actually sniff the packets here. Now again, you don't have to do this. It's just I want you to see what the packets really look like. So be sure you select an interface. I like to go to options here. So I'm going to pick the VMware interface since this is a virtual machine. You can tell that you've got a good interface by looking at the IP address here. Again, we're filtering out traffic to port 3389, which is a remote desktop. It's not a big issue in this case since this is these virtual machines are set up on a private network. But we'll put that on there. I'm going to turn on update the list of packets in real time. Then we might as well automatically scroll. So click start here, so that starts our scan. Now we can go back over here to super scan. And we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll scan ports 1 through 100. And notice we're getting a lot of traffic now. This is because uh, super scan is creating packets and sending them through the router. And here's our results. Same thing we got before. So let's stop this. Notice we had 600 packets there. Quite a bit to look at. Um, now as you scroll up through here, you'll see there's a lot of reset acknowledgments or reset act packets. If you remember um, our previous work on port scanning, either in this class or in the IT250 class, what uh, what SuperScan is doing here 
it's trying to initiate a um, the three-way handshake or at least do the first part of the three-way handshake so superscan sends a send packet for example look at that one right there from 172.16.1.2 destination is 10.10.10.2 there is a TCP packet being sent from port 2060 this is on 172.16.1.2 being sent to port 84 TCP port 84 on 10.10.10.2 it's a send packet now if there's an application listening on port 84 it should reply with a send ACK saying that it's 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 uh, uh, that's the next step of the three-way handshake so it's saying that I'm up and running and I'm uh, going through the process of establishing a connection so you can talk to me now in this case port 84 there's nothing listening on port 84 so if we come down here you'll notice this packet here is coming back from 10.10.10.2 back to 172.16.1.2 and it's just reversed the ports are just like the IP numbers are reversed the port numbers are reversed it's coming from port 84 back to 2060 and it's a reset ACK now superscan is going to interpret that as being a closed port and that's why port 84 wasn't on our list of open ports as reported by superscan Let's scroll on up here and see what one looks like that is actually truly open or listening. And sometimes these are out of order. Superscan doesn't necessarily have to do it consecutively. I was looking for port 80. I'm sure I didn't scroll past it inadvertently I don't think I did let's go back up through here what we probably should do is go back to the very beginning Superscan tries these things multiple times so we may be at the end of the list here let's go down through here till we find one that's actually we get a response on probably the first one we'll hit here is port uh, 21 Here you go. Let me scroll up just a little bit. One more. All right. From the virtual XP to the virtual 2003 server, from TCP port 1997 to FTP, this is the control port. You can tell it down here if you expand this packet. See the destination port is 21. FTP uses 21 for the control, 20 to transfer the data. You have to set up a session with port 21 before you can trans start transferring data over port 20. So um, the XP or SuperScan running on the XP sends a send packet through the router to the 10.10.10.2 machine. And since there is the FTP service running and listening on port 21 we're going to get it we do get a response back this is the SYNAC packet this would be the um, the second part of the three-way handshake now SuperScan actually completes the three-way handshake in this case and sends the final act so port or excuse me um, 47 I'm going to mark it 48, mark it, 49, these are the actual three packets involved in the three-way handshake to connect uh, 192, excuse me, 172.16.1.2 port 1997 to IP number 10.10.10.2 port 21. So here we are with three-way handshake. As soon as the three-way handshake is established, the FTP server service running on the 
uh, our virtual server sends back this packet. This is the response. It's a 220. This actually means something uh, in the um, FTP specification. Um, if we look here, if we drill down a little bit here. It simply reports that this is the Microsoft FTP service. This one doesn't give out a bunch of information about itself, and that's good. Uh, what you see here, this is called a banner, by the way. Um, this is where the information was displayed in SuperScan that I said was of interest to a to a hacker. Now, I'm not interested in the rest of the little transaction here between SuperScan and FTP. Um, and finally, the SuperScan terminates the connection with a thin ACK here. Uh, we found out what we wanted to know. This, this computer, the virtual server, is running the FTP service. And um, there's been a number of vulnerabilities in FTP. Uh, so from an attacker standpoint, this is interesting information that we could probably use, or potentially use. So that was an example of an open port. We previously looked at an example of a closed port uh, when you get back a reset ACK. Now keep in mind, this is things we're seeing with a router uh, set up, but it's not, um, it's not filtering anything. It's simply letting everything through. Here's another example of a connection that was successful. This is a connection to the simple mail transfer protocol port, which is TCP 25. See right there. So there's the initial send packet from the XP or from SuperScan running on the XP. Here's the send act back from the SMTP service running on the virtual server. Here's the final act uh, from SuperScan. This is the response back from the uh, SMTP service running on the virtual server. And notice here the data. Well, it's what's included in the simple mail transfer protocol. This is a good example of a banner. This is the response. Um, I think it's showing me what I need to see right now, but we'll drill down to get to the bottom of this. All right, this is actually what's we sit back in the packet, and you sh uh, should notice uh, you should recognize this as what uh, SuperScan reported uh, about the SMTP service. We're given a version number on this one. Uh, a vendor, uh, the ES MTP mail service, Microsoft version. We're given a version number. Um, from an attacker standpoint, this is a gold mine. We not only know the man, the vendor, uh, we have a version number. So now we can go look and see if there are any vulnerabilities um, in this particular version. And if there are, are there exploits already available for this? And we might be ready to, uh, to launch an attack. So that's two examples of what a successful... Um, scan looks like, or a scan that finds an open port. So the first one we looked at was a closed port. Here's another example of a closed port. We're checking port 26. We get a reset act back on 26. There's nothing there. If we get back, a, uh, we, we send the send packet and get a send act, that means that something is listening, some service is listening on that port. Sometimes we hit the jackpot and we get uh, uh, version numbers, etc. So these are all things that come through a router that's not doing any packet filtering. Now, next what we're going to do is we're going to um, configure the router to do some packet filtering and see the difference. Um, I'm going to go and save this. Probably save it two different ways. First, I'm going to save my marked packets.
I'm going to call this uh, port scan. Uh, basic router config. Uh, this is marked. This is that what we marked was FTP packets. I'm going to say this because I'm. I don't know. I got this thing about uh, captures. I like to look at them. Now let's do it again. We'll we'll do everything this time. Let's do all this. And now instead of instead of FTP, I'll just put it all in there. So, again, we didn't have to run Wireshark. I wanted you to see what SuperScan is, was looking at, or is looking at. So let's go back to SuperScan here. We saw the results of, we saw the packets that SuperScan is using to tell us that port 21 is open. And we saw that in the banner or the packet coming back. We also looked at the simple mail transfer protocol and this is the information that was included in the response packet from it. Uh, this is a gold mine for, uh, for an attacker. We could have looked at these other ports. They were also open. They also sent back a CINAC. Uh, port 80 also reported uh, sent back information that we could uh, we could use in its banner. So this is what's going on. Now keep in mind, again, two things. Number one, we haven't done anything to the router. It's just simply passing all the packets through and all the responses back. Uh, this is not what we want our, well, we want our router to route, but we're going to use it to do some basic um, packet filtering. And that's going to be the next movie, next video that I'm going to make here in a few moments. I actually show you what happens when you start filtering.